We love our Grand Design fifth wheel, but Grand Design, what the heck were you thinking? You will not believe what fell apart in our new camper. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it's hard to live amazing when your expensive camper falls apart over nickel and dime issues, right? Yeah, yeah. They scrimped on um, attaching a pretty important part of the <laughs> interior and it resulted in, in kind of a, a near disaster. It really did and we were shocked. So we are going to share with you what went wrong. So first of all, we have a 310 GK fifth wheel camper made by Grand Design. It's a solitude and we love it. We love Grand Design. This is the second Grand Design that we've owned, but we're just a little not happy because of something that went wrong, which was major and it really could have been bad. So we had stopped in Montana to visit some new friends, uh, Mark, Ann, and Abby, and hi. And, uh, <laughs> and we were going to show off oh, our yeah. new fifth wheel because they are actually interested in a grand design fifth wheel. And we were a little embarrassed to open the door. And yeah, we see. didn't know. I mean, we had parked and set up, but really hadn't gone inside yet. And we had a nice dinner with them. And then we brought them out to show them the camper to, you know, kind of brag on our camper. Yeah. So I opened the door and I could see the problem. And I was like, there's no getting by this. There's no way everybody's going to notice. It, it, we just couldn't. So I turned to Paul and I told him, I said, look, and what we were looking at is we have this beautiful kitchen island. It really is the centerpiece of the 310 GK floor plan. It really is. Yeah. It, it's just beautiful. Well, <laughs> it looked like the Titanic. Yeah, it was. It had dropped about three inches on the end closest to the door. So yeah, so it's sitting unleveled. Oh, oh my God, this is like a heartbreak. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So it yeah. looks like the, the, the whole thing dropped. See the, what holds it up? Here? Yeah, whatever you have, it holds us up. Oh, yeah. look! Yeah. You're right. Yep. That's what it, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep. So. It just come right through the... Uh, wow. That dropped so much. But see, here's, sweetie, there's more damage back here. All this right here. Oh yeah, of course. It's yeah. all the way back here. Yeah, it, it's going to. It's, it's mounted on the platform. And, and that, so this drawer. I'm worried that it knocked the uh, frame off. Right. So this drawer on the other end, Paul, is popped open, like because of the twisting. Now in our island is this double sink, mm -hmm. and you know we have you know plumbing lines and. Oh yeah, it's leaking. Oh, is it? Oh. Yep. There, oh, see. I can see it. Here, let me get this. Here, put the light on. Uh, it's there. It's a, oh, that's a hard, hard to... Go ahead, count. Down? Okay. Yes. And what had happened, and, and this is what I meant in the, in the um, beginning when I said, what were you thinking? They decided to attach this heavy island with two screws on each side. That's yeah. it. The island empty has got to be, what, 100 pounds? Oh, at least At least, pounds. because it's got the solid surface countertop. You know, and of course, we, you know, we have stuff in it. All we did was drive down the road on the interstate all day, and we have had our camper since March, and so we've had it for seven months, mm -hmm. and we put 2,500 miles on it, so... It's a little too early in the game for it to fall apart. Yeah, for stuff like this to be happening this soon is, is a little unnerving to me. And, you know, uh, and you know, I feel kind of bad even making this video because I applied to be a Grand Design ambassador. I mean, I really do still believe in Grand Design, but stuff like this, you know, we need to maybe send this video to Grand Design to have them wake up because instead of putting two screws, now how much does a screw cost? Okay, one individual screw. Ten cents. Ten cents. So it needed, instead of two on each end, it needed how many? I, well, I had ended up putting six on each side, so. Yeah, so it wasn't an easy fix. We had to jack up the end of the island. Thank goodness for Mark being right there to help us because if we had stopped in a rest stop as planned, we wouldn't have any wood around. Yes. And then 
we had to shim it exactly right. But you want it level and, and you know, I used some two befores and Mark had some shims. Thanks, Mark. You were a lifesaver. You know what? We This could be a public service announcement. If you own a 310 GK, just go ahead and do this. Yeah, take these. These are trim panels right here mm -hmm. and just they will come off pretty easily. You'll need an air brad nailer to put them back on. And a pry bar to get them off. Well, yeah, a pry bar would come in handy to get them off. And just add some screws to the bottom edges and you'll see where they're at. When you pull the trim piece off, you'll see the two, two that they decided was enough from the factory. It's a good idea, no matter what camper you have, to just kind of go through, because here we have a grand design, which is known for high quality. No matter what camper you have, if you're full-time or part-time, you might want to go through and reinforce everything, right? Well, where you can, sure. This is the thing. So Grand Design thinks they're going to save money. They only give us a couple screws on each end of the island. So now we're thinking, well, what does the rest of the rig look like? Yeah, what else did they scrimp on? I'm actually worried about this thing now. <laughs> I hope that this video actually serves as a wake-up call for them because we know they have been responsive. My very first Grand Design was a 260RD and one of the downsides on it was minor, but it was like, you know, the sink, the faucet was really short. Well, do you know, they watched that video, they obviously did, because now the bathroom faucet on the 2021 260RD is long enough. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, I'll go through all the problems we've had with this just to give you an idea. The very first problem was they had left the electric water heater unplugged. There's a junction box um, on the side of the water heater and uh, they didn't get the spade terminal plugged in. Mm -hmm. That was a relatively simple fix. But and if you're not Paul, you would have to go back to the dealer. You'd have to wait for an appointment. You would lose camping days. Yeah. You know, Paul yeah. can do, you know, you're not typical. Well, <laughs> <laughs> in a lot of ways yeah so uh yeah that was a fairly simple fix what was the next one the awning the so, awning had started to come apart from yeah, the side of a, the rig it was letting go outside of the little groove there's a rod or a wire that runs through where it attaches to the side of the rig they didn't push the rod all the way through so i got a, a number 10 screw and just a long screw and i, I gooped it up with some uh, silicone and shoved it in it's been fine ever since. And that was not an easy repair because Paul actually turned to me and said, we may have to take it back to the dealer. Yeah, that I wasn't sure what I was gonna find. You know, I'm, I come from the automotive field and I was a field engineer for Hyundai. I worked for them for 27 years. So I am used to problems. I mean, that was my life at work. I would be sent into dealers when the dealer couldn't figure something out and I had to figure it out and, and help them fix it. In fact, when we were fixing the island, or actually when Paul was fixing the island. Mark and Ann both said at different times, well, you know, there's an RV dealer down the street. There's an RV dealer that does grand design over here. And I'm thinking to myself, no, 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 we're, Paul yeah. will fix it. Yeah, we don't have two months to wait. We're on the road. So, and that's the problem uh, with the RV industry as a whole. If you need service on your rig, you're gonna get in line and, and you're gonna wait until they can get you in. So if you're traveling through an area, you know, I suspect that, that some of the better dealers will make room for you and fix something right. if, it's, if it's very, you know, if a slide is out and won't come in or something. I, right, but most dealers will make a priority to the people that actually bought rigs from them, yes. not from somebody passing right. through. So one of the other things that went wrong was the tile over my left shoulder here I started coming off the wall. You know, Grand Design stepped up in that issue. The other two I was able to fix without even contacting them. They actually sent me a crate with all the tile, I could have done the entire backsplash over with, with the stuff they sent. So my experience with Grand Design having the 260RD is that any time that I called for a repair, they would send the part directly to me as a full-timer and that's why we're such big Grand Design fans. And if you don't know it, uh, Paul and I met on the road. So I bought the 260RD and was a solo traveler and I needed, since I'm not a fix-it person, I needed to have that support from the company. Yeah, truth be told, that's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> and let me say this, it, it doesn't matter if you've got a, a Grand Design or a Jayco or a, or 
you name the manufacturer, you're going to have problems with them. My brother, who was in the construction trade for many years, used to refer to houses that he worked on as lick'em and stick'ems. That's certainly the way they're building these trailers now. I mean, they're literally stapled together in many cases. That's true. And if you are thinking about buying an RV and, and joining the RV life, know that if you aren't already a fix-it person, you will become a fix-it person. No matter what you get, you really have to be handy. So don't let this discourage you if you're shopping for a grand design, a tow behind or a fifth wheel. Like I said, every manufacturer builds their rigs pretty much the same way that grand design does. The difference with grand design is they really stand behind their products. Uh, so when you need something, they'll be there for you. And with all this in mind, this is kind of a not so perfect life out here. I mean, it's great, but, but you are gonna have problems. And with that in mind, there is a couple and their children who are traveling and they have a channel called Our Not So Perfect Life. Yeah, we love that channel. It's a new channel. So if you wanna support a small channel and watch them grow, go to Our Not So Perfect Life. And we will see you in the next video, right? Yes, we'll be here.